Mogo chips. Mogo chips. This one is in response to an earlier video I did and a couple of my uh, viewers, um, Susan Joehill and Wraith Beats, requested that I show you how we make Mogo chips. And in order to make Mogo chips, you'll need one or more of these little beauties. It's a starchy tuber known as cassava. Uh, it also has other names, but uh, what we do with this, it's because it's like a woody tuber, um, something akin to a potato or a yam. Uh, what we need to do with this, first of all, is we need to parboil boil it. So we, we, we need to boil it off before we can turn it into uh, chips, as it were. So uh, without further ado, um, I'm going to get in, I'm going to use my speed peeler and peel these guys. All right, you're going to need some salted water on the boil, plenty as if you were boiling pasta. And I've now got these peeled and as you see they're quite a dense woody tuber um, but trust me the flavour of them is superb. I'm going to cut them in half that way first and then I'm going to cut them in half lengthways, in half again and each half I'm going to half till it's like that. So. There you are. So we should get 16 chips out of each cassava. And if you buy your cassavas e evenly sized, you'll find that your chips are all fairly evenly sized as well when you've finished. So we cut that in half and half again. That's about the right size. Half half again. Um, let me show you the texture of that. There you go. Okay, that's the texture of it. And whereas with Irish potatoes, um, ordinary what we call potatoes in the UK, um, you can just put them straight in the fryer. But because this is cassava and sometimes you get this little woody bit down the middle. If you do get that, just cut it out like that. Because um, you don't want to be eating that bit. Right, so, again with this one. That's all right. So there at the end of the chopping we've got ourselves a nice collection of uh, already prepared Mogo chips and they're all roughly evenly in size and in volume. Right, right let's get them into the hot water now shall we? So all we do now is we boil these for around about 10 to 15 minutes um, until they're showing signs of being soft. They don't need to be completely soft because we finished cooking them actually in the fryer. All right, let's get them transferred. What we do is we bring this pot right up to the boil now and then we'll turn it down um, to a medium heat and let them cook off for about 15 minutes. All right, uh, I thought I'd do um, in the middle of this. this the, these mogo chips are really nice uh, served with uh, tamarind sauce and this is a nice jeera tamarind sauce uh, of uh, Indian. It's uh, Maggi and uh, it's really nice. It, it's a nice um, tangy tamarind sauce with the flavour of jeera in it. It's really rather good. Um, the, the sauce I actually recommend with this would be Taste of Trini's uh, Tambran sauce uh, or Tambran chutney but uh, I thought I'd put this review in at the same time I did this um, so there you go that's uh, Maggie's Authentic Indian t 
tamarind sauce. I'm just going to have a little taste of that. And mm, lovely strong flavour of um, roasted um, cumin, of roasted jeera. Fabulous flavour sauce. Um, and it's tangy and ever so slightly sweet. So it's it, it really is good and it's perfect uh, as an accompaniment for uh, these lovely mogo chips so that's my mogos parboiled in salty water and uh, drained and we're just allowing them to cool a little bit uh, while I'm heating up the the oil you want to get your oil up to about 180 degrees Celsius which is about 350 degrees Fahrenheit and we fry them in fairly small batches you don't want to be frying um, and load of these all at once because they'll cool down they'll cool down the fat if you put too many in at once and also we want to get a nice um, a nice golden fry on them so um, the next scene you'll see is back at the frying pan all right my oil's just coming up to heat so I'm going to start dropping these in a couple at a time And then we fry them until they're a pale golden brown. Now, you would eat these mogo chips just about anywhere where you would eat uh, French fries and particularly uh, steak cut French fries, nice and thick ones. Um, or they're really good just on their own as a snack with the tamarind sauce. All right, I've got a little tip for those who want you to have things that are uber extra crispy. You get them to fry them so that they look fried, but they're still at a pale early fried stage. And then you take them out and you fry some more, allowing those ones to cool down a little bit. And trust me, this works. It works with anything that you cook, uh, fried chicken, um, anything battered you par fry it and then you fry it again when you first start to cook with these you might find them a little flaky and you might think they're going to be breaking apart but as soon as they hit the deep fat fryer all this crusts up and goes um, firm so uh, that's actually desirable because it gives a little bit more more area on, on which the oil can work to make them nice and crispy but you'll see them in the end, the finished result. So now's my second lot that have got up to um, a pale cooked uh, stage. And then what I want to do now is just bring my oil right back up to heat. And it doesn't matter if it goes up to 190 in this case. So there you go. So wait a minute or two till that's up to heat and then we can put them back in. So there we go, I'm just going to tip all those back in and then make them, cook them now until the golden brown and they'll be super crispy. So there you are, that's the colour you want them uh, when you take them out. So there we have it, super crunchy, crispy mogo chips. Check out that, crunchy and crispy. I'm going to give that a dip in that sauce. And I'm going to take a bite. Mmm. Mmm. And that, boys and girls, is righteous. All right, just a quick footnote there. Um, if you're going to fry them off uh, for freezing and then you can recook them at a later stage, you're better off leaving them at the um, early fried stage uh, and then letting them cool down, uh, freezing them up. And then when you fry them, you only need to give them that last bit of fry, bring them back up to heat and uh, that lovely, till they're this lovely golden color. Uh, and then they'll be ready to eat. So uh, enjoy.
If you have enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you would like to follow my channel, please subscribe and be sure to click the bell icon to receive notification of all my upcoming videos. Thanks for watching.